The ketogenic diet is a little bit different for a female than it is for a male. See, there's some things that we need to be paying attention to and some specific things that we can do to make the experience just as good, if not even better, for women as it is for men. See, females have a lot more complexity when it comes down to the endocrine system. There's just a lot of different moving pieces. And when you add a change to the diet into the mix, there is just a lot more things that can potentially go haywire, a lot of hormones that can fluctuate a lot more complex than, say, with the male. So in that note, we have to be paying attention to how we transition into the ketogenic diet. And I'm going to explain all that towards the end of this video, but I want to lead all this off with why the ketogenic diet actually works well for women. Now, the fact of the matter is there's not a ton of research out there with women in the ketogenic diet, specifically. There's a lot of research out there with men and women, and a lot of research out there with just men. But as the ketogenic diet gets more popular, we're starting to uncover more and more research specifically regarding women and keto. But because there's not a whole lot of evidence, I wanna show you some of the comments that have come up on a recent video, specifically talking about keto and thyroid, where a lot of women have commented their success with the ketogenic diet. So let's take a look at a couple of these before I dive into the actual science. So you're tuned in to the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. A bunch of other videos throughout the week as well. So make sure you hit that little bell button so you can turn on notifications and know whenever I post a new video. So let's go ahead and get right into things. So the first most critical thing we need to look at is the balancing of hormones. Okay, whether you are male or female, this is important. But obviously with a lot more complexity to the endocrine system, it's more important that we pay attention to the endocrine system with women. So let's go ahead and leave this off with a study that was published in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition. This study was a meta-analysis, took a look at 18,555 women. And what they found was that carbohydrates and the quality of carbohydrates were one of the biggest factors when it came down to predicting infertility. They found that lower quality carbohydrates and a high amount of carbohydrates ended up increasing the risk of infertility by 78%. Why do I even bring this up? What does infertility have to do with this? Well, the fact is that most causes of infertility are surrounding the world of hormones. Now, it's not to say that all of them are, but the fact is, is that infertility is usually linked with an imbalance of hormones of some kind. So when we actually make the link that high carbohydrate consumption or even low quality carbohydrate consumption actually leads to infertility, we can kind of connect the dots here with how the ketogenic diet might help stabilize some of this. But let's take a look at another study. And this study actually looks at PCOS. Okay, well, this is, I want you to hear me out on this though, because just because a study takes a look at women that have polycystic ovarian syndrome doesn't mean that the actual results or the findings don't apply. So this study was published in the journal Nutrition and Metabolism took a look at 11 women with PCOS. Okay, so what they did is they had these women go on a very low carb ketogenic diet for six months. So for six months, they consumed less than 20 grams of carbohydrates per day. Well, what they found at the end of the study was that there was a 12% reduction in body weight amongst those that completed the study. So that alone is really cool. Okay, then they had a big reduction, 22% reduction in total testosterone, okay? Obviously, women don't want to have a high amount of testosterone. They don't want those androgens. So a lower level of testosterone was really, really important. They had a big improvement in their LH and their FSH. So this was really, really important too. That luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, that ratio is really, really important when it comes down to overall hormonal stability. It's a cascade. If those hormones are off, everything else cascades. Well, here's what was really important. They had a 54% reduction in fasting insulin levels. So they were able to find, by looking at this study, that the fasting insulin levels coming down was ultimately the root of the success with every other thing, the weight loss, the hormone balancing, et cetera. So they've determined now that hyperinsulinemia, the high levels of insulin that normally occur, especially in the Western world, are usually the cause of PCOS and the cause of all kinds of early menopause and the cause of a lot of these other hormonal issues that are very, very important and honestly plaguing our society and making a lot of women's lives very uncomfortable. 
So when we can start controlling the amount of carbs that come in and hopefully go on to a ketogenic style lifestyle, then we can control this a little bit more. But let's take a look at menopause for one second. And even if you are not someone that's going through menopause, this will help make some sense of everything, okay? So when someone goes through menopause, their hormones, of course, are shuffling. There's less ovulation, so as that starts to happen, you have less progesterone, less estrogen, and this throws things off. So when that happens, you end up having increases in other hormones. For example, you end up having higher levels of insulin, but you also have higher levels of ghrelin. So for women that are going through menopause, they usually find themselves very, very hungry. And because the insulin levels end up higher, it ends up being a lot easier for them to gain weight. So if you're someone that's going through menopause or has gone through it, you know that it's a lot easier to gain weight. Now, obviously I'm not a woman, so I can't speak from my own experience, but I do educate and work with a lot of women that have gone through this and they experience just that. The weight gain, the hunger, the brain fog. The cool thing is the ketogenic diet directly suppresses ghrelin. So it suppresses the hormones that would make you hungry during menopause, a huge, huge thing. Now, additionally, when you're going through menopause, you have that hyperinsulinemia, the higher blood glucose, the higher blood sugar, which triggers a lot of brain inflammation. It's the exact reason why a lot of women complain about getting foggy while they're having hormonal shifts, whether they're going through their menstrual cycle or they're going through menopause. When hormones are shifting, it's easy to have hyperinsulinemia, have high levels of insulin that are making you foggy. The ketogenic diet suppresses those inflammatory signals so that brain fog doesn't happen as much. High levels of insulin end up triggering inflammation. So if we can reduce that, then we can reduce the inflammation and you're gonna feel better all in all. Now we have to get into the big one, the thyroid, okay? So if you remember the comments from the early part of this video, there's a lot of women that talk about how their thyroid levels actually improved on a ketogenic diet. Now, unfortunately, when we start looking at the science, a lot of the studies that relate the ketogenic diet with the thyroid are done on men. So in this particular study, I am gonna reference, it is talking about men, but it does at least give us a brief synopsis of what's occurring within the body and gives us some explanation as to why you might see a little bit of a decrease in your T3 thyroid levels, whether you're male or female. So let's drop into this study. This study was published in the journal Metabolism, Clinical and Experimental. Okay, it took a look at 12 male subjects. Okay, these 12 male subjects went on a low carb diet, ketogenic diet for six weeks. And then they had control subjects, eight of them that did their regular control carbohydrate diet. But at the end of the study, the men that were on the ketogenic diet ended up losing 3.4 kilograms of fat. So, okay, so they lost a lot of fat, but they also found their insulin levels decreased significantly. But more importantly, they found that their T4 levels, so this is the thyroid hormone that is precursor to the actual active T3, they found that their T4 levels increased and their T3 levels didn't even really change. So these men didn't see a decline in their thyroid. If anything, they saw a slight increase in their overall thyroid activity since their T4 levels went up. So this is really, really powerful to know. Now, of course, we're not comparing apples to apples here because this is men. But what this study did help us uncover is that carbohydrate metabolism played a big role in the T3 level. You see, when we're consuming carbohydrates, we have to allocate a specific amount of thyroid hormone just to the metabolism of glucose. So you take glucose out of the equation or you take sugar out of the equation or carbohydrate consumption out of the equation, your thyroid levels are naturally going to drop a little bit because you don't need that little bit required to break that down anymore because you're not eating it. So it's perfect. Now, what women need to be concerned with is eating specific cruciferous vegetables a whole lot. Okay, that can have effect on the thyroid. So we do wanna control the broccoli, we do wanna control the cauliflower a little bit. So I usually recommend that women only do about one serving of broccoli or any cruciferous vegetable throughout the course of their keto day and lean more on the fibrous vegetables like the artichoke and the asparagus and things like that. It's just gonna make your life a little bit easier and reduce any risk of consuming a goitrous vegetable that could affect your thyroid. Now the cool thing is there's a lot of things you can do to boost your thyroid, whether you're keto or not. And those of you that know my channel know that I'm a big fan and utilize Thrive Market. Now, I've been able to create my own thyroid-specific Thrive Box. Okay, what that means is it's all ketogenic foods that are there to support the thyroid. And I created this box because I wanted to help out women that were doing the ketogenic diet. Okay, it's got foods that are gonna be high in iodine, it's got foods that are gonna help support a healthy ketogenic diet, but also give you the selenium and the trace minerals that you need to support your thyroid. So down in the description, there is a link and you can check them out. You can go to Thrive Market and you can literally get groceries delivered to your door cheaper than what you would even get at a discount grocery store. And you don't even have to drive to the store. So they're a huge sponsor of this channel. We were able to coordinate the creation of this box 
products specifically for thyroid videos and for this Keto for Women video. So check it out as soon as you're done watching this video. But there's a little bit more I want to talk about. I want to specifically talk about how you can do the ketogenic diet a little bit differently. Okay, for women, it's very important that you don't jump right into the keto diet. I usually recommend that women take two to three weeks to taper into the keto diet. Reduce the carbs slowly, because what happens is it's the massive drop in blood sugar and the change in insulin function that can cause your hormones to shift a little bit. This might make you feel a bit wonky and actually exacerbate some of the negative issues. So you're gonna wanna ease into it. So you're gonna wanna slowly increase your fats while simultaneously decreasing your carbohydrates over the course of about two to three weeks. Whereas with men, I might say jump right in, get yourself into that ketogenic state. Honestly, it's gonna take you a few days to get into ketosis anyway, so this kind of eases the pain a little bit. But I will say, women are generally going to have a slightly tougher time transitioning into keto because you can't go black and white. And it's that gray area that makes it a little bit tough. So just hang in there. It's gonna be one or two weeks of not feeling amazing, but once you do get into keto, you are gonna have probably better results than even men. You just have to get through that tough part. So that's the most important thing. The other thing is to eat foods that help stimulate AMPK. So AMPK is what your body creates or utilizes when your body's having to tap into its own energy stores. AMPK helps improve the mitochondrial efficiency at metabolizing fats, which means when you do go into keto, you're gonna be able to shift into that process a lot easier. So you're gonna to wanna to consume a lot of omega-3s, as much as you possibly can, but also a lot of omega-7s, okay, like palmitoleic acid, so you're gonna have that in macadamia nuts and things like that. You can do a quick Google search for high omega-7 foods, and you're gonna find a whole list, a whole plethora of them. So omega-3s, high fat fish, things like that, those omega-7s, this will make a huge difference when it comes down to your mitochondrial support. Lastly, do whatever you can to refrain from fasting until you are actually in keto. I know a lot of women that will utilize fasting to get them into ketosis. The fact is that is pretty dramatic on your body. I recommend women implement fasting once they've gotten themselves keto adapted. It makes a big, big difference to have your body a little bit more conditioned to utilizing fats as a fuel source before just depriving yourself of calories. That shock to your body can send your hormones completely awry and cause you to produce a lot more androgens that can actually cause a lot of moodiness but also cause a lot of brain fog. So very, very important. And of course, last but not least, you can get your hands on that Thrive Box that I talked about. That's gonna give you all the goodies that you need to support your body but also support your thyroid and make your ketogenic lifestyle a heck of a lot easier, a heck of a lot cheaper than it normally would be too. So thank you again for watching. Make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.